Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hey, it is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and help you guys out with some league starters for Betrayal. Now, most of these are basically kind of designed around for solo self-found. Um, also, they're specifically for like the early game and progressing into mid game. I don't really have any content to show of any of these builds since 90% of them are all like reworked and new skills. Um, this is not really going to explain too much of the end game. The only one I'm really going to explain end game is the one I end up playing as my league starter, which so far I'm, I'm going with Stormbrand. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So for Winter Orb, if you guys are curious, here is the Winter Orb skill. Uh, it basically is going to create an orb on top of your head. That orb then shoots projectiles out uh, and hits all the targets around it. And it's kind of like a similar playstyle to how Blade Vortex works, where you have to keep the stacks going. So we're going to be playing it as an Elementalist. The reason why we're playing it as an Elementalist is because Elementalist is going to give us the ability, so we're going to go Pendulum Destruction to Mastermind of Discord. It's the, I believe, the best Ascendancy for scaling non-crit, well, not best for non-crit, but best for scaling penetration. Um, the reason why you want to scale penetration is if you're not going crit, the number one way to get damage is by basically going penetration, uh, at least from what I found personally. So Pendulum of Destruction gives us nice AoE. The AoE is going to be really great in general just because it helps with clear. Um, and then we get Mastermind of Discord. Then we get Shaper of Desolation, which I don't really like too much. And Uber Lab would be Beacon of Ruin, which is really good because it adds a huge defensive layer because you're going to be freeze proliferating to everything around you uh, along with making it so you will always ignite, or not ignite, you always shock targets. All you need is a little bit of chance to shock or you can just rely on your Shaper of Desolation. So this makes it so even the little tiny one lightning damage makes it so they take 20% more um, from pretty much everything, which is the last line of text there. This is going to be a CI character. Um, so if you are not kind of interested in CI characters, the first three builds are all CI. Um, with the introduction of Delve and Bestiary, playing a CI build is very, very easy. It just is still a bit annoying when you have to do that transition swap, which I typically recommend doing that swap either after you've killed Katava or after you've done Merc Lab. Now for people who need help leveling, I do have a path of building progression link for each character. It's broken down into 20 points at a time. So for example, 1 to 20, 21 to 40, uh, 41 to 60, etc. I even have the time to respect the CI in there, which is around 80 to 100 points in. Um, the keystones we use is Chaos Inoculation and Elemental Overload. We also make use of the new uh, Essence Surge, which gives us flat energy shield. I personally don't really like playing leech base builds, and since Winter Orb offers a more kind of like run around playstyle, I feel you really can make use of energy shield recharge instead of going leech. But again, it's just a personal opinion. Uh, if you want to do leech, you can modify the build and grab Ghost Reaver, uh, for example. But that's going to feel kind of weird. Um, Next up, the auras we're going to use is Discipline plus Herald of Ice. Mainly Discipline because it's going to give you ES for CI. And you could always transition into a low-life build if you were to find the Shabs. Herald of Ice because since we're going to be freeze proliferating, it's going to offer us Shatters. It also allows us to link things to it like Ice Bite to get Frenzy Charges potentially like later on. You also have room for one Blasphemy with a Reservation that we pick up. I would recommend if you want to be on the offensive side, use Frostbite, or if you want to be more defensive, you can use Temp Chains. Both of them are really good. We've got the links associated right here. I'm not too sure on Bone Chill yet. It's difficult to really say since I've never used this skill before, um, but you can feel free to swap the links around however you'd like. Control Destruction because it's a huge damage multiplier. We're playing non-crit. Hypothermia because it gives us freeze chance and more damage against chilled targets. GMP is going to be needed so that your orb can start firing multiple projectiles. Cold pen because as stated before, we're scaling penetration. And then, like I said about bone chill, not really too sure. Uh, you could always use something like added cold or, for example, like ice bite or what else is there? Empower. There's a lot of options. Uh, for leveling uniques, there's not really too much uh, that I put in here. For the most part, a life sprig works for most casters up to like Act 9. You basically will use the plus one gem recipe or you'll just use a life sprig and, you know, use, for example, like GMP uh, control destruction or GMP hypothermia probably with, uh, with uh, what is it called? Uh, frozen orb. Now, if you're having single target issues, it's a bit difficult for me to figure out like how much the skill does. You can try using one of the other new skills like Ice Spear. 
Um, Ice Spear is crit oriented, but um, it never really hurts to try using another skill for single target. Uh, I haven't really decided exactly what else would be the best solution for it because I really have to play to see. Uh, but remember that you should be using things like Frost Bomb with pretty much all cold builds, because unless you're Inquisitor, because it's going to reduce the cold res. It's really easy to use a four link setup with Frost Bomb, increased duration, Arcane Surge. Um, Frost Bomb, increased duration, Arcane Surge. I think that's really all you need to do. Uh, and that's going to basically do the minus 20 cold res. And you're going to proc Arcane Surge for yourself, which gives you a spell multiplier, which makes it really, really nice. I've also linked the uh, Path of Exile vendor recipe, so you can search pretty much all the recipes you would need inside here. So for the next character I've made, it's going to be an occultist, and it's going to be with Arctic Breath. This is actually a character I also really, really want to play. Now, the reason why we're playing Arctic Breath and occultist is because Arctic Breath was just recently changed. So Arctic Breath now deals 1100 base cold damage per second, it scales off of spell damage to the damage over time, and it makes it so it can have 10 chilling areas. But if you read the last line of text in there, this area will creep across the ground towards enemies until its duration expires, which means the skill slowly will move, well, the AOE will slowly move, which makes it really nice for map clearing. You know, you hit into a shrine and it kind of just creeps towards and will kill everything. Now, this skill, unlike Ice Speed, well, I guess we'll talk about talk about the single target after but um one other really cool thing about it is if you guys were not aware there is a new stat that has been added called uh cold damage overtime multiplier cold damage overtime multiplier is one of the two new stats that was added and it is a huge buff to pretty much any damage over time cold build, which didn't really exist prior to, you know, Vortex, and Vortex was pretty crappy, but um, that new stat is found not too much, but you can find it basically all over the passive tree, um, orienting cold nodes. So for example, here we have 10% to cold damage over time multiplier. Let me just search cold damage over time. Oops, there we go. So you can see we have three nodes here, along with growth and decay, Fingers of Frost, which I'm excited because I never get to use Fingers of Frost. And with our Occultist Ascendancy, we get huge buffs from this. So the first thing I want to state is how cool this synergy is. As, as an Occultist, you're going to get immune to Freeze, immune to Chill, and you're going to get immune to Stun. So you already have a great feeling CI base. Now, you also have Void Beacon, which reduces life regen, and Cold Res. Reducing life regen is really nice because when you're playing a degen build, one of your biggest counters is regen. Because if it can out regen your degen, you do zero damage. Not that that would ever happen, but you know, four property essence mobs and things like that, this really helps. Especially Frost Bomb, but I don't think you can make them go backwards in regen. Um, Frigid Wake also has some really interesting synergy. Um, or not really synergy, actually, yeah, synergy with Temp Chains and Freeze Duration. You have every four seconds, you have a chance to freeze uh, nearby chilled unique enemies. That 0.6 second is, is a base value that I do believe gets scaled off of temp chains and freeze duration. Um, and then also nearby chilled enemies deal reduced damage with hits, which is great. And then of course, since we're playing CI, we get to play Occultist, so Wicked Ward and Vile Bastion, super good. Now, if you wanna play this character hybrid right away, you can just kind of like the ED, well, I haven't explained ED yet, sorry. You can get Wicked Ward on your normal lab because this is going to make it so when you're fighting bosses uh, at like, you know, say like level 40, level 50 in act progression, you can still regen your ES even in combat because of the way the mechanic works, uh, which makes it much smoother. Honestly, this is the smoothest leveling experience for energy shield characters I've ever had is Wicked Ward, basically. So let's get back to our document. Um, this is going to be kill all for bandits. Most of my characters are kill all for bandits because two skill points is really strong. Uh, it's not crit based. We went over the links. Again, there's the POB, uh, POB progression guide. It grabs pretty much the same things as Winter Orb. Now, this character is not going to run Herald of Ice, uh, mainly because I'm going to be focusing more on degen and not upfront damage. So we just run Discipline. And then we've got Blasphemy, Temp Chains, and Frostbite for maximum freeze potential. Uh, we're still not going to be freezing like big boy things, but 
just in general, it's going to feel really nice, especially with Chilled Ground. Chilled Ground plus Temp Chains, they did nerf it so you can have 75% at the movement cap now, but it's still going to be really nice. And you could always swap out Temp Chains with another curse. As for leveling, there's this weapon called Spine of the First Claimant, and Spine was now recently buffed, so it actually gives like 35% to that cold damage multiplier over time. So if you could pick these up, I'm sure you're going to do insane damage leveling. Otherwise, I would probably just use like a Life Sprig. Um, you know, I put Life Spring. I would just use a Life Sprig to level up, and you should probably be fine. One of the cool things about this, though, is unlike Winter Orb, uh, all of these things like stack. So Vortex damage over time should stack with Cold Snap damage over time, which should stack with Arctic Breath damage over time which makes it so Arctic Breath is great for clearing, and then you would use something like Cold Snap or Vortex for single target if you feel you need that extra damage. And then, of course, you can always use the Frost Bomb as well. So next up, I want to go over Essence Drain. Um, I've never played Essence Drain before. I leveled with it a few times, but the reason why I plugged Essence Drain in here is because it's really similar to Death's Oath, if you guys are familiar, and it got a huge buff from the Passive Tree. The reason why I don't want to play Death's Oath right now is because I don't really change anything with the build, whereas with Essence Drain, I would change things. So with the Essence Drain character, we actually get to pick up Withering Presence. Uh, this is a new node. This was not here before. And one reason why I never really wanted to play Essence Drain is I really like Occultist, but Essence Drain kind of favored Tricksters, mainly because Profane Bloom kind of messes up the way your Contagion spreads your Essence Drain. But now you can just go Withering Presence instead. And since you get 60 Chaos Res, it means if you're interested in going CI or low life, you can easily respec CI and go low life with that 60 Chaos Res, which is really nice. Essence Drain also benefits from the new stat multiplier, which is um, non-ailment chaos damage over time multiplier. And that is also on the passive tree. You can find it here. You can find it down here. You can find it up here on each one of these little ones. And you can find it here at Growth and Decay. So with this character, um, we finally do not grab EO since it's, a, uh, since it's a Chaos Damage character. We grab Zealot's Oath since Essence Strain has a built-in component for regening. Um, instead of Life Leech, it's tagged as Life Regen. So Zealot's Oath makes it so that always affects our Energy Shield. Uh, same thing with this character. You can use Wicked Ward to basically level up early. Uh, we run Discipline. And now one interesting thing with the curses is uh, instead of doing the classical, like, Tri-Curse character, this character is going to do Blasphemy, Despair, and Feeble. But I may swap in Feeble for Temp Chains. The reason why I'm not running Temp Chains right now is I need to figure out if, and I, I don't really know exactly, if this skill right here applies Hinder on enemies because Hinder will slow by, I think, 35%, and that is more than enough for me to not really justify running Temporal Chains, but I'm not exactly sure yet. Oopsies. Let's bring the document back. Um, your links are pretty normal. Um, void Manipulation, Control Destruction, Efficacy, Swift Affliction, and Power Slash Decay. Uh, leveling should be really easy. You can just level with a Life Sprig. Now, there's this old weapon uh, called Cane of Unraveling, which got buffed in this patch. Just pull it up for you guys. Cane of Unravel. Oops, what the hell is this? Picture. You know what's linking me to Amazon? A Cane of Unraveling PoE. It's a nice Amazon plug in there. So Cane of Unraveling gives you plus two to Chaos Gems, and this this right here was nerfed, but this plus two Chaos is pretty big. In the patch now, this was nerfed to like 20 to 30, but you get like 35% more chaos damage over time multiplier. Actually, I think it's like 50%. Um, so we don't really know how strong those values are when crafting ourselves normally, but if you can find one of these for cheap and like you, you just want a weapon to just start going, Can of Unraveling is for sure gonna take you super far. And even though it doesn't have energy shield on it, we're playing an occultist, you're gonna be no problem with ES. Um, you can also use Blight with Threshold Jewels if you feel like your single target is low. And remember, you want to make sure you're using Contagion to spread Essence Drain. So next up is going to be Stormbrand. Um, 
This is the character that I actually am pretty curious to play, mainly because I've been getting a bit bored with trap playstyle and I wanted something new, and they gave us brands. So Storm Brand uh, basically creates a magical brand that can attach to a nearby enemy. It periodically activates while attached, firing beams which deal damage to nearby enemies and those around them. The brand will detach if the enemy dies. So, uh, let's talk about the reason I decided to play Hierophant for the brand character. So, Mr. Stormbrand Hierophant is over here. Hierophant has this new node called Sign of Purpose, which allows you to cast an additional brand. There is one really important thing to note though, which is brands have a uh, limit. So like you can only attach a certain amount of brands to an enemy. So if you have four brands, it doesn't mean the enemy can have four brands because there's a specific node that allows you to attach more brands to an enemy. So I haven't played a Mind Over Matter character in a long time and I was pretty keen to play one. So I decided to go Hierophant for this. You also will get Illuminated Devotion, which increases area of effect, which is normally useless, but in this instance, I do believe it gives us brand attachment range. We also get spell leech, which works for us. And just in general, a nice chunk of spell damage. Then we're gonna get arcane blessing, which makes us elemental immune, which feels really good because we can run pretty much any other flask that we want now, uh, like wise oak, for example. We can run an adrenaline flask. All we have to worry about is like bleed and uh, bleed poison, which poison you can use Pantheon for and uh, da, 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 curses. And then for Uber Lab, we go Divine Guidance. The only problem with this character, I think it is going to absolutely destroy. I'm a little concerned about its survivability because this build at 118 only has like 150 life, but it does get 40% conversion mind over matter, and I can respec a few things. I haven't decided on this. So one respec option is I can pull out of, uh, where is it? I can pull out of Storm Weaver and I can just start going towards Marauder and grab the Marauder life, which puts me to like 197. But the build does get, I think, four jewels. One, two, three, four. It gets four jewels and flask effect. So it, it should be pretty decent, to be honest. Um, as for the damage, you have incredible damage because we've got like, uh, we can scale minion damage with this character. Um, and you get brand damage, and then you scale off of like Ellie damage, spell damage, cast speed, etc. So I'm pretty excited for this character. The brand playstyle looks really, really interesting to me. Uh, we kill all with this build. It's not crit. We're going life, mind over matter, but 40% mind over matter. Uh, we get rune binder, mind over matter, and elemental overload. We're just going to be running clarity. Now, there is an option of using an essence worm with wrath for the damage multiplier as well. And then... Uh, I haven't decided if I'm gonna run a blasphemy because it's gonna, you know, reduce my maximum effective life since we're mind over matter. This I'll really kind of have to play the character and see what it needs. I think ideally a curse on hit would be optimal if I could find anything. So brands are a bit unique and in, in kind of like their links. So we've got controlled destruction since we're not crit, lightning penetration, innervate, faster casting slash echo, and added lightning. I'm not really happy about this added lightning. Um, so this may be swapped with Empower or maybe something else if I can figure something else out. Um, I haven't decided what's better between Faster Casting and Echo because if Echo only makes you cast two brands at once and doesn't actually affect the brand itself, it's not going to be very good. But by that logic, the Faster Casting might do the exact same thing, but I don't think so. Um, so this is something we need to figure out. But it does for sure increase the pulse speed. I don't know if there's much lightning based weapons to level with. I know there's generic plus to elemental weapons. So you're probably just going to use like life sprig with the brands to level. Excuse me. And unfortunately, as, as I stated earlier, I don't really have too much info on this character, but it's most likely going to be my league starter. So you can probably just tune into my live stream and ask, you know, like how the character is scaling. So the next character, uh, I don't really play attack builds, but Lancing Steel looks very, very nice. Just to pull up the skill for you guys. Lancing Steel is right here. Basically, um, it's crazy far range. You thrust an axe or sword forward, releasing a primary projectile that impales enemies it hits. Additional projectiles appear nearby as smaller metal shards. So you have the main projectile that impales and then the side projectiles that come after. So I decided to play Deadeye. I know a lot of people are interested in playing Champion for this because of the new Impale. 
I don't exactly know 100% how Impale works. Again, I'm just kind of one of those people who has to actually play it to really get a feel of it first. But Champion is a really fair option because there's this new node called Master of Metal, which gives you a chance to Impale, but you do Impale every single time with the main one. Uh, impales, you inflict last two additional hits. And you can kind of see the rest of it. But we're going to be playing Deadeye for the following reasons. Number one, we get Tailwind. I've never actually played Deadeye before with Tailwind, so I'm really excited for that. Tailwind is a multiplier to your action speed, which is like your attack speed, your movement speed, etc. Next up, we go Far Shot. It's pretty obvious. It's a multiplier. 30% um, more attack damage with hits to target, so we get to play a melee build and be super far safe. Uh, we also go Ricochet. I'm not sure if Ricochet is going to be better than Powerful Precision. This is another thing where I basically have to play to see if Chain feels better than Pierce. Um, but thankfully, you know, it's literally just a super simple respec. And then the other reason why I wanted to play uh, Deadeye is because Fast and Deadly makes your accuracy rating doubled. Champion does have the option of making it so you have Worthy Foe, which enemies taunted by you literally cannot evade attacks. But I figured I could probably play around with simply like... Uh, Rick, or sorry, with uh, Fast and Deadly and, and make it work. Uh, I think my path of building skill link is a little bit different than this one. It, yeah, don't worry too much at this one. Basically, the path of building one we have, I decided to drop the shield nodes down there and grab Revenge of the Hunted. Um, again, it's it's lower on the points than this because I don't think we grabbed Quick Step. And I'm pretty sure we dropped this. The other thing is, I know I have Acrobatics and Shield nodes and people were curious on that. Mainly the shield nodes I pick up are just one-pointers, which are increased defenses from equipped shields, uh, which is going to allow us to just scale a ton of evasion. And of course, if I don't like it, you know, you just, it's really simple. You just click it and respec it. I think it's more like this. Anyway, you can see it in the progression links over here. Um, it's going to be a life-based character with acrobatics and phase acrobatics. Uh, as for the links, we're currently going to be running Hatred and Herald of Purity. Not sure how good Herald of Purity is yet. But this leaves us with a ton of unreserved mana. Haven't fully decided exactly what else would go in this option. You could take the character from physical, convert it to elemental, and do shenanigans like that, but we're going to be staying away from that. Um, there's also Curse on Hit is something really popular with uh, Elder Rings and Shaper Rings can roll um, Assassin's Mark on Hit, Warlord's Mark on Hit, and Poacher's Mark on Hit. It's probably going to be ideal to get... Um, to get uh, Assassin's Mark on hit, since I think the build is going to lack crit, especially if you're playing kind of like SSF. As for the links, we've got Maim, Added Fire, Vicious Projectiles, Ellie Damage with Attacks, and Greater Multiple Projectiles. Now, GMP is going to add multiple, uh, I think like Lances or, or whatever they're called, to the attack. But I don't know if it's going to be able to shotgun properly. What shotgunning means is, say you have four projectiles that fire in a line like Barrage, all those targets can hit the same target, which means it like effectively shotguns and hits multiple times. If this allows us to do that, GMP is going to be great. Otherwise, you probably will use Volley for clear speed because Volley will make it spread like that so you could hit the whole pack at once. Uh, I have a bit of uniques in here since there's a lot of flat fizz uniques. So basically, since you're going to be using a sword and axe, you're going to be looking for high PDPS. Your shield, there's Calton Hall, Deep Ones, Hide, Great Ones, Ward. These all give flat fizz. Dive Bell gives flat fizz, and Medjinords give flat fizz, and there's a bunch of other uniques as well that you could uh, socket in there. Uh, there's also, remember, you want to be stacking flat fizz. You can also do percent wed on most accessories in the game, which is, sorry, increased attack damage, increased elemental damage with attacks. There we go. And then if you are playing SSF, remember you have Rustic Sash recipe. I believe that's the good one you want to do to get guaranteed percentage IPD on your weapons. So the Righteous Fire one, as I said, I'm going to skip this one and make a separate build guide for it just because this video is already 24 minutes long. Let's try to make it under 30. So next up, I've got the Blade Vortex Chieftain. Now, this character was originally inspired by my old character, uh, Zug Zug, which was Shockwave Totem. I did Solo Cell Found, Shockwave Totem, and Killed Shaper. Um, it was in Softcore. One of the few leagues I actually played Softcore a bit was Delve. But I did do it Deathless numerous times, so that was no problem. And I told myself that playing Chieftain as a pure fire caster was actually a lot of fun. So one of the problems is, it's not really a big problem, but for the inexperienced players, it's going to be very difficult to level because if you look, there's literally no damage nodes. So you're going to be best off either purchasing uniques right away um, 
probably leveling with like arc mines or firestorm mines or you can just use i'm not really sure what attack people use early game but for sure like i guess molten strike ancestral call is probably going to be pretty good you could even pick up like some some melee nodes if you really wanted to instead of like pathing in through here you could just path in through melee and respect the points after i'd probably say though once you clear normal lab normal lab gives you access to nagamu's flame advance Nagamu's Flame Advance is 50% of your physical converted to fire. Blade Vortex is a pure physical skill. You can then grab Avatar of Fire, which gives you the full conversion. So you now have 100% conversion, which means that you can scale off of elemental damage, fire damage, 100% now, and even physical. Well, you could scale off physical before, just not melee physical. Um, this Chieftain character is really nice as well because it has built-in sustain. You get the 1% fire leech as life. Uh, which is really nice as a caster. Also, one thing, I mean to go back to the Lancing Steel character. I forgot to explain this. Um, you do get Mono Leech down here, and you get eight per, sorry 0.4% attack damage leech from Blood Drinker, and you can run Blood Rage, uh, which will give you more leech on top of that, and you can run Blood Rage because we get 1% regen from Heart of the Oak, you also get 1% regen from Master of the Arena, and you get another 1.6 from Golem's Blood. So the character does have good sustain, so that's one thing to note as well. And we get uh, good flask nodes at Arcane Chemistry and Druidic Rite. Anyway, going back to the Blade Vortex character. Also, don't mind my cat, he's a little, you know, wine wine QQ. Uh, since we are a Chieftain Blade Vortexer, again, damage is going to be a bit rough on the beginning, and probably just in general, you're not going to have as much as other classes. So that's why I was really happy to be able to grab Spiritual Aid and then path this way, for example into our uh, uh, witch, witch class. So spiritual aid gives us a total of, I think it's 109, 104. You get 104% minion damage with this tree, which is basically treated as elemental damage or more importantly, global damage. Um, also, another thing to note is Mana may be an issue with this character. So I decided to go a little bit out of my way to make sure hopefully that doesn't happen. We grab Tireless, which gives us a total of 3, 6, 9, so that's 15% reduced mana of skills. You could also, for example, grab Righteous Decree here. You just pop in here, and you can get Righteous Decree for reduced mana of skills and maximum mana. You also have the two-point option at Dynamo. Um, scrolling up more over here, we have a mana regen cluster. You can go Mind Over Matter. This is another thing I didn't decide with the character yet. I kind of have to play to understand if I want Mind Over Matter or not. Um, going through which we do get mana as well and then I think that's pretty much all that we have and hopefully that is enough to sustain a six link if not again remember we have options so that's not too much of a problem uh, remember that chieftain also gets every 10 seconds 70 percent of your physical damage is extra fire makes him a really good fire conversion build or fire build in general we get our leech here like we said Tawaho's forest strength gives us endurance charge generation and makes it so that endurance charges give us fire damage and then ramaka sunlight in general is just it's just a good it's just good it's 100 fire res one percent life regen uh physical damage from hits taken as fire damage it's pretty nice overall okay moving on so we're going to be doing kill all um as for our crit we're not going to be going crit you could also potentially run righteous fire on this character but that would be like, you know, another step into gearing up. It's going to be a life character. The only um, ascendancy, or sorry, keystone we grab is Avatar of Fire. Now, this is where I was talking about where we may be able to go Mind Over Matter. So currently, I just have Herald of Ash as what we're going to be running. You could run Hatred and Herald of Ash. Uh, Hatred and Herald of Ash would, be, would both be pretty good, but that's like 85% of your mana reserve. And I don't know if we're going to have enough mana left. So... Currently, right now, it's just Hatred and Herald of Purity. And then, if we can fit it in, Blasphemy Flammability. But I'm probably either going to drop Herald of Purity for the Blasphemy. It's still kind of up in the air, depending on what we're going to use. And also, since Chieftain doesn't really get any Dexterity, we do have the option of grabbing 20 Dex at Precision, 30 Dex from the tree here, and 30 Dex from the tree here, which puts us at 94 Dexterity. And if you really wanted to, you could also grab versatility, which does give reduced mana cost of skills and dexterity on top of that. 
So as for our links, which could be up in the air because I haven't, you know, I haven't played this character yet. Added fire, combustion, control destruction, fire pen. Uh, and then I'm curious, I think immolate is going to work pretty well. The reason why we don't use elemental focus is because if we use elemental focus, we will not be able to gain endurance charges from our Tawaho's forest strength. And just endurance charge generation in general is pretty nice. As for leveling, um, you've got life sprigs, just like you know everything else I've pretty much been saying. Uh, Aberath horns though are pretty nice because once you get conversion, Aberath horns add uh, like 40% fire damage and flat fire to spells. Um, so they're they're actually pretty so, uh, strong. And if you find an Ashrend early, Ashrend gives level 10 added fire. So you could actually just like use an Ashrend, for example. And if you were to six link it, you'd have a pseudo seven link blade vortex. Uh, the colors may be a bit iffy, but you know. Shh. Um, and then here I just pretty much have you know a little little text document here. Uh, one quick thing I do want to shout out that we are going to be hosting a private league for betrayal. Um, if you guys played the previous private league, you'll know that we did a crafting league. This go around, it's going to be vanilla because we don't want the veiled items to bug, unfortunately. It's going to be vanilla with extremely limited trading. Uh, the limited trading I can actually just show right here. Which is, you can basically see. Uh, for the most part, the only things you can trade is unique jewel for unique jewel to enable builds. Helm enchants because every well, majority of people I would probably say do not like labyrinth. But it must be white when you trade it because otherwise you're selling gear and we're not doing that. And then Prophecy for Prophecy. And then we will be polling for extra stuff, kind of like a community run server. And if you don't know, this is totally legit. These are hosted on Path of Exile's actual servers themselves. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. hope this was a bit informative for you guys. Remember, if you want the document link, I'll be posting that on the comments below and I'll sticky it. If you are having issues using the document, make sure you use the how to use document. Uh, a common issue a lot of people have is these are all updated skill trees and I don't think the Path of Exile website has the updated skill tree yet. So if you were to just open the PoE URL, it's gonna be broken because it can't upload a new tree on an old builder. So don't forget to just plug that in so that you can actually see the actual characters. And then that's pretty much about it, like I said. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'll try to get the RF video out tomorrow for you guys. But that's pretty much about it. So hope you guys had a wonderful time, like I said. Remember, I stream live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. So feel free to tune in, ask me any questions. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Take care, everyone. See you guys all tomorrow.